Continuing our look at India here on the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Just got the opportunity to speak with Nadine Nahata over in India, and she is the proprietor, the founder of the country's only and first whole food, plant-based, no oil restaurant, completely probably the healthiest restaurant in all of India. But on the other end of the spectrum, what you are starting to see in India is an explosion of fast food restaurants. They are popping up on virtually every corner. And it got me to wonder, well, is that very much like what is happening here in the U.S.? What are the obesity trends over there? What is the rate of heart disease and cancer and diabetes? Does those trends, do they mirror what is happening here stateside? And so to talk about that, I wanted to welcome Dr. Zishan Ali to the Exam Room Podcast. My friend, welcome back. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you so much for having me here. It is really a pleasure. And let's just start right at the top. I mean, what what is going on with this explosion of fast food restaurants there? Yeah. Uh, so, Chuck, I would I would like to uh, mention that that India we were known for our lentils and our traditional food, uh, uh, grains and millet. And what I'm seeing is there is. Uh, I, I will always present this slide in my presentations and where and what they have done is that they have compared the consumption of core cereals, edible oils, meat, fish and eggs in urban and rural population between 1983 and 2000. And what they found is that the consumption of core cereals has decreased by almost 70 percent in both the urban and rural India. And the consumption of edible oils and meat, fish, and eggs has increased to almost like almost 100% in case of meat, fish, and eggs in both the populations. So we are seeing that people are eating a diet which is high in uh, meat-based products, high in calories, highly processed. And all these companies like McDonald's and KFCs and Domino's and Pizza Hut's are using this opportunity to sell fast food products in India. And chicken uh, in India, we are producing 165 million tons of chickens every year. That has, um, sorry, I, I, I take my words back uh, uh, for the chicken. Our chicken cons uh, production has tripled over the last, uh, I would say 15 to 20 years. So previously, we were, we were producing 1.5 million tons in the year 2000. And now in the year 2018, we were producing 4.5 million tons, which is now, in, this is 2021, as I'm guessing, it's very high now. So we are using a lot of chicken products, a lot of paneer consumption, which is uh, people are eating in these fast food outlets and heavy on cheese, again, pizzas, fully laden with cheese. So this is... Uh, Every time I would say that uh, people in America now we are realizing that these fast food uh, is not uh, outlets and this fast food is not good for us. So every time a uh, McDonald is closing out in uh, in USA, there is one popping up in India. So definitely these are disturbing trends we are seeing, and India has shifted from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases. And now mm -hmm. non-communicable diseases account for 60% of all deaths in India. So when you're talking about non-communicable disease, you're talking about heart disease, right? You're talking about cancer, you're talking about diabetes, things like that. That's so true, yeah. Diabetes, for example, now uh, the diabetes has, you know, all over the world, is it is it has reached to an epidemic proportion. But in India, we have 72 million people with type 2 diabetes. And there are million more whose diabetes have not been diagnosed yet. So in India, uh, Chuck, we don't have this uh, annual physical like we have in USA where we go every year and check our blood sugar level, our cholesterol. In India, what happens is we have, we have no national insurance policies. So most of the people in India, they just go to the doctor when they are sick. So there is no preventive side of things. So people go to the doctor and sometimes even for my aunt, she had an accident and she was she went to the hospital because she got injured. 
And there in the hospital, she found out that her glucose level was 400. And she never realized that because she never went for checkup. So most of the people are pre-diabetic. Most of the people have uh, diabetes, undiagnosed diabetes. We, they don't even know. But by the time they know, it's too late. It's It has already damaged their organs and there is so much going on. Uh, and uh, these are really some disturbing numbers for diabetes. For the heart disease, if you compare India versus USA, I was just reading an article. For example, in uh, India, we lost 62.5 million years of life as compared to USA with 15 million years of life in 2016. So you see such a big difference from 15 to 62.5 million years of life lost. That means that those, we lost so many people who were not supposed to die at that young age. So this was really disturbing. And same case, I would say, uh, with uh, obesity, that these are disturbing trends. We are seeing people both in urban and rural India that uh, obesity is rising. And especially for the people in India or and people of Indian origin, they have to be more careful because, because of their body mass index, because of the more visceral fat in the body, more deposit in the abdomen. So the propensity of people in India having type 2 diabetes as compared to Caucasians is already very high. Our body mass index, which is normal, is 23 as compared to people in US, it's 25, right? So we have to be a people of Indian origin, people in South Asia, the whole region, India, Sri Lanka, uh, Pakistan, Nepal, all these uh, people in this region have to be really careful about uh, their uh, their metabolic diseases, uh, especially type 2 diabetes and obesity, heart disease, hypertension. Well, we hear about all of those rates going up, and let's talk about why this is happening. I and mean, we mentioned the explosion of fast food restaurants, but I found an article that was written in the New York Times in 2014, and the headline reads, A Growing Taste for U.S. Fast Food in India. And I want to read for you an excerpt from this article. It says, quote, In the past few months, Taco Bell, Krispy Kreme, Burger King, and McDonald's have either announced plans to expand in India or have opened new outlets around the country. Krispy Kreme, in particular, was the latest to open a new store with its first outlet in Delhi last month. That is in addition to its five branches elsewhere. Now, here's why they're opening. It's not just because people get hooked on their food. It's because these restaurants are making a ton of money. So there was a study that was done in 2013 that estimated that uh, in that year, fast food, two and a half billion dollar industry. That's pretty big. But by 2020, so this has already happened. This was a year ago. By 2020, it would be an eight billion dollar wow. industry in India alone. So that is just enormously uh, enormous growth but the rate at which these fast food restaurants are popping up is it's just mind-boggling to see that and now here's what i really want to dive into you is this another article hypothesized that these restaurants are becoming so popular because we're seeing more and more people enter the workforce there and people who live in India are facing the same stressors, the same time constraints that a lot of people here in the States are facing. They say, though, that the majority of patrons at these fast food restaurants are those younger aged workers who are going to these restaurants that are fueling that. And it's kind of mind boggling to me to hear that because you would think that with the younger generation, they would have more access to the studies that have been done, all of this information that we talk about all the time that show that fast food consumption is adversely correlated with good health outcomes there. So you know that it's bad for you, and yet people are still going there in droves. Help me understand why that might be happening. That's 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 so true. It's mind-boggling. Definitely, uh, we don't know why why this is uh, why this is happening. Why the young population is so uh, uh, so interested in going to these outlets, and they know that this is not good for them. That you are right. That this is uh, inversely proportional uh, to their health. But what is happening is that this is the way the advertising industry is working in India. That they are 
really big on selling these products to this young population. It's like, like a trend. So here, I, if I compare people visiting to these fast food outlets in USA as compared to people visiting these fast, fast food outlets in India, I see that here it's a, it's a these fast food is the food for people who cannot afford healthy meal. So they say, oh, wow, $1 burger. Yes, we would like to have that. But in India, it's a trend. I see families going with their kids on Sundays because we have Sundays, a uh, one day holiday uh, in a week. So I see them going there, uh, there with a can of Coke, ordering pizzas and this uh, fried chickens. So it's like they feel uh, that they are, they feel empowered that this is something really trendy and they are uh, aligned with the westernization. So that's, that's westernization is has such a big influence in India that people always see America that we want to dress like them, we want to eat like them, we want to look like them, we want to do everything what people are doing in America. But now they are not re they are not realizing that America has paid a big price for following that trend. Now we are learning with all this research coming, understanding that these fast foods are not good for you, but India is falling on the footsteps of USA. And this is the reason why when we do these talks in India and spread awareness about uh, food and nutrition, we talk about this. Uh, don't try to westernize your diet. Try making your diet easternize. What you have been eating for years, don't try to become like us. You are, We should look at you and try to uh, be more eating more Indian friendly diet and not US friendly diet. So these fast food outlets are making good use of it. They know that America sells, American brand sells, and they are making use of it. And in the last 15, 20 years, we have seen like what you are saying, like enormous growth in this industry. All, all these fast food chains are increasing at a rate of anywhere from 90 to even 270% increase in the number of outlets in India. And it's not like this is going unnoticed around the world with the eye on India. In particular, there's another headlines that uh, another headline that I found from CNN, and that headline was India, notorious for malnutrition, is now a land of obesity. And uh, that's a pretty, I mean, blunt headline when you think about it. I'm curious, do you have any statistics on what the uh, obesity prevalence is currently in India? So, yeah, uh, what we have is the uh, prevalence of obesity. Earlier, it was pretty low. And now you will be shocked. You will be shocked to know that in urban areas, the prevalence of obesity is anywhere from 25 to 31 percent. And in rural areas, it is anywhere from 15 to 20 percent. And surprising thing is also that uh, even women, are now we are seeing them increasing trends of obesity in India. Earlier it was it was more like uh, for the males, but now we are seeing and uh, increasing obesity prevalence in women and also childhood obesity. This is really increasing, and again, it's um, most of the time I see the people, the kids, what they are eating is American snacks or American-based food. It's a westernization of the diet is really killing us. What would you say would be the traditional snack for a, a child growing up in India before the Americanized food entered the country? So that, this is a perfect ex example for me. When I was growing up, we didn't have access to all these fast foods. So what I would do is we have these vendors coming on the street side and they would be selling, for example, chickpeas, roasted chickpeas. We will be eating idli based thing or sambar based things so those are for for the kids if you really want to snack i mean india is mangoes i mean this is just imagine that i mango is a time for the summer i know but there are, we produce so many different kinds of fruit and we i always remember that in after coming from school i would just uh, eat all different kinds of fruits and bananas we grow them in india and grapes but those who are looking for savory kind of things, we have these amazing chickpeas and lentil-based 
snacks and you don't you don't have to fry them you can bake them and these are some i would say baked samosas uh, using not using the the uh, the fla the the enriched flour but something like oh, more whole wheat based flour and you can have mungodas mungodas are made with the uh, green mung uh, mung beans and this is some uh, great and you and then this is there is a chickpea flour so we have used for snacking my mom would make this uh, pancake with chickpea flour and with some red onions and tomatoes and with tamarind sauce oh i i would love that <laughs> i could i could give away anything just to get uh, to eat that hot uh, chickpea flour pancake um so we we talked about the obesity rates now let's talk about some of the other diseases that we've already mentioned as well uh what right now are the current estimates for the rate of diabetes in india how does that stack up to what we're seeing here in the us so diabetes if like according to the world health organization and indian and, and international diabetes federation if we don't do enough our diabetes rate will keep going high and by the year 2045 we will uh, cross uh, 100 uh, 100 million mark uh, for our people with diabetes and we don't want to uh, reach there we want to make sure that uh, we can reduce the number of uh, both incidents and uh, uh, and the treatment of or reversal of type 2 diabetes those who already have it so the, the the trends are really going in the wrong direction and we know that if we don't do enough we don't change our policies then definitely we are going to see some disturbing trends and because india is transitioning from a uh, low income economy to middle income uh, middle class economy that's more important that we should mind the 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 way we are eating if we keep eating westernized food we will we will see these disturbing trends uh, in not only in diabetes both in even in hypertension and heart disease so my message is very loud and clear that uh, we have to watch what we are eating because type 2 diabetes as dr neil bernard says it so well is not a one way street it's a two way street you can you can reverse it if you start watching what you are eating focus on lifestyle modification so you mentioned heart disease that is the number one killer here in the states how does that stack up in india right now do you know yeah uh, so heart disease like like anywhere in the world is in, in india also most of the people die is number one is the number one cause of disease even in india i don't have exactly the number of uh, people who died of heart disease in 2018 or 2019 but definitely on a very high rate and again uh, as i told you because of uh, the the way this is also called the indian uh, thin uh, how it's called thin india fat type thing because people in india are considered thin but they have this uh, abdominal fat and this is something which scientists and researchers are unable to figure it out that what it what is this kind of phenotype why people of indian origin have this uh, genetic propensity of uh, having um, type 2 diabetes and uh, heart disease at, a, at, an, at an early age. I don't have the numbers, but definitely these of us are also rising, Chuck. And it just, it makes me wonder, even though you said that a lot of people there don't frequent the doctor, there aren't these annual checkups like we have here. I'm, I'm just thinking with these rising rates of obesity, of heart disease, of cancer, diabetes, all of these, obviously you would think that uh, medication, a lot more uh, people there would also be um, requiring medication. And so you would see pharma, uh, big pharma enter the country as well. Not to sound conspiracy theorist, but it seems to kind of fit in that natural order of things. Yeah. So uh, all these uh, diseases are, are, as you clearly said, that these are rising. And these, uh, what, how the insurance system works is that I've seen that uh, people, 
will try to I, I don't know that's that's the culture the cultural thing or it's more uh, the economic thing or it's the fear of the doctors doctors is that people try to avoid visiting a doctor until unless it's really really serious so that's what i've i've seen in uh, in india it's changing now but still like uh, people of uh, in our in my country people will go to the doctor and by the time things have already crossed that stage where it can be managed or it can be something can be done intervention can be done so most of the time definitely the doctors are prescribing medicines and people are the adherence is also an issue to these medications um, but 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 the biggest problem is that uh, people are relying on medications and the thing that even like let's say for a dose of uh, an antibiotic which has to be taken at least for three days or four days then people will just take it and if they feel good they will stop it so people when they start becoming their own doctors then it's a problem but uh, working with the doctor make sure you take the right medication at the right time this is very important and uh, um, yeah that's uh, that's what is necessary Let's end on a higher note, a more positive note. It seems to me that just as we're seeing here stateside again, is that there is this this glimmer of hope, this optimism that we can right the ship. We can get things turned around from a health perspective. Is it your estimation that there is the same reason to have that similar optimism with India if more and more people become aware of exactly the ramifications of eating these uh, westernized fast foods. Um, is it all doom and gloom? I, you know, leave us with a sense of hope here. I know, yeah, Chuck, I, I, I wish that we have this hope and I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this is definitely happening in India. And I see that because, all, for example, what you are mentioning about this, this restaurant with Nidhi, what they are trying to do is they are trying to bring back the traditional food back into the center of the plates in, uh, for people in India. And we are seeing that now people are realizing that, hey, there is definitely uh, great sources of protein, for example, lentils, why, why we are not focusing on lentils for our protein needs. And we don't have to worry about complementing or counting our needs for protein because these can be easily satisfied on a plant-based diet. Soybeans, amazing sources we produce in India and uh, uh, these are these are amazing sources of protein and calcium beans and greens for calcium needs and there are so many uh, grains which we grow for example uh, uh, millet and uh, uh, wheat and jai and jowar and and bajra so these are all amazing so many different kinds uh, of grains we grow in india rice we grow so many different varieties so brown basmati rice is definitely the number one favorite of India uh, then but then I mean these are some we hope that people start using these these staples which we grow in India we are not asking them to get like quinoa or broccoli which they, we don't grow in India you have we have spinach and we have fenugreek leaves which is so easy to grow and full of uh, uh, nutrition and Carrots and sweet potatoes, what not? We grow so much of produce in India. And I'm sure that if we realize that and start using that, focusing on the four food groups, uh, grains, legumes, fruits, and vegetables, and the amazing uh, cuisine we have, and amazing spices we have, and all the wonderful people cooking at home, they know all those recipes. There is definitely hope. And I'm sure if we can turn this around and we start eating right, focus on stress management, some exercises, along with focusing on plant-based food. Yes, that's the recipe for success. Now, I'll tell you what sounds amazing right now are some of those roasted chickpeas you were talking about earlier. That just sounds heavenly right about now. So true, Chuck, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Zishan Ali, thank you so very much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you for having me here.
If you feel like you've raised your health IQ by a couple of points, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and leave a nice comment below. And to hear the entire interview, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your shows from and subscribe to the exam room by the Physicians Committee. And please leave a five-star rating.